Chapter Forty Two of A Book of Discovery. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Book of Discovery by M. B. Singh. Chapter Forty Two. Tasman finds Tasmania. At this time, Antony Van Diemen was governor at Batavia, and one of his most trusted commanders was Abel Tasman. In 1642, Tasman was given command of two ships for making discoveries of the unknown South Land, and hoisting his flag on board the Sea Hen, he sailed south from Batavia, without sighting the coast of Australia. Despite foggy weather, hard gales, and a rolling sea, he made his way steadily south. It was three months before land was sighted, and high mountains were seen to the southeast. The ship stood in to shore. As the land has not been known before to any European, we called it Antony Van Diemen's Land, in honor of our Governor-General, who sent us out to make discoveries. I anchored in a bay and heard the sound of people upon the shore, but I saw nobody. I perceived in the sand the marks of wild beasts' feet, resembling those of a tiger. Setting up a post with the Dutch East India Company's mark, and leaving the Dutch flag flying, Tasman left Van Diemen's land, which was not to be visited again for over one hundred years, when it was called after its first discoverer. He had no idea that he was on an island. Tasman now sailed east, and after about a week at sea he discovered a high mountainous country, which he named Statenland. We found here abundance of inhabitants. They had very hoarse voices, and were very large made people. They were of color between brown and yellow, their hair long and thick, combed up and fixed on the top of their heads with a quill in the very same manner that Japanese fasten their hair behind their heads. Tasman anchored on the north coast of the south island of New Zealand, but canoes of warlike Maoris surrounded the ships. A conflict took place in which several Dutch seamen were killed. The weather grew stormy, and Tasman sailed away from the bay he named Murderer's Bay, rediscovered by Captain Cook about a hundred years later. This is the second country discovered by us, says Tasman. We named it Statenland in honor of the States General. It is possible that it may join the other Statenland of Schouten and Lemaire to the south of Terra del Fuego, but it is uncertain. It is a very fine country and we hope it is part of the unknown south continent. Is it necessary to add that the Staten land was really New Zealand, and the bay where the ships anchored is now known as Tasman Bay? When the news of Tasman's discoveries was noised abroad, all the geographers, explorers, and discoverers at once jumped to the conclusion that this was the same land on whose coast Pelsart had been wrecked. It's most evident, they said, that New Guinea, Carpentaria, New Holland, Van Diemen's Land, make one old continent, from which New Zealand seems to be separated by a strait, and perhaps is part of another continent, answering to Africa, as this plainly does to America, making indeed a very large country. After a ten months' cruise, Tasman returned to Batavia. He had found Van Diemen's Land and New Zealand, without sighting Australia. A second expedition was now fitted out. The instructions of the Commodore, Captain Abel Jansen Tasman, make interesting reading. The orders are detailed and clear. He will start the end of January, 1644, and we shall expect you in July, following, attended with good success. Of all the lands, countries, islands, capes, inlets, bays, rivers, shoals, reefs, sands, cliffs, and rocks, which you pass in this discovery, you are to make accurate maps. Be particularly careful about longitude and latitude. But be circumspect and prudent in landing with small craft, because at several times New Guinea has been found to be inhabited by cruel, wild savages. When you converse with any of these savages, behave well and friendly to them, and try by all means to engage their affection to you. You are to show the samples of the goods which you carry along with you, and inquire what materials and goods they possess. 
to prevent any other European nation from reaping the fruits of our labor in these discoveries, you are everywhere to take possession in the name of the Dutch East India Company, to put up some sign, erect a stone or post, and carve on them the arms of the Netherlands. The yachts are manned with one hundred and eleven persons, and for eight months plentifully victualled. Manage everything well and orderly. Take notice, you see, the ordinary portion of two meat and two pork days, and a quarter of vinegar and a half quarter of sweet oil per week. He was to coast along New Guinea to the farthest known spot, and to follow the coast despite adverse winds, in order that the Dutch might be sure whether this land is not divided from the great known south continent or not. What he accomplished on this voyage is best seen in the complete map of the southern continent, surveyed by Captain Abel Tasman, which was inlaid on the floor of the large hall in the Stadthouse of Amsterdam. The great south land was henceforth known as New Holland. End of chapter 42